Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be doing something that we haven't done for quite a while, and that is the candle by candle market psychology. Now, as far as the candle by candle is concerned, there's a lot of things that we'd like to take into account here, but the idea is to give us a psychological backbone as to what the market is doing and why it may be doing it at any given point in time. Now, before we can gauge what's going on for the current day, yes, we've got a nice little gap to the upside. It looks like it's a relatively big bull bar, but we need to know what took place the day before. What's the context? What is leading up to this? And if we zoom out, we can see that, well, this is a this is a pretty strong rally to the upside. We've got a lot of bullish breakaway momentum, and a lot of it really started kicking off into a spike in channel that is now breaking further up. So obviously, this is an incredibly strong rally to the upside, and bulls are going to be looking for this to keep on going. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to do it right out of the gates. In fact, it looks like the first candle, even though it is an outside gap to the upside, doesn't look like it's exactly the strongest bar in the world. And more likely than not, buyers are going to be a bit more tempted to buy underneath the lows of that candle to find value rather than buying way up here, not necessarily knowing how much further it has to go. So the concept here is that the bulls will be looking for a continuation phase around a, any kind of inside pullback or even better yet, if they can get any pricing underneath the bull bar, that's about as good a pricing as they could possibly hope for in terms of value. Now, the issue with this is where does the stop go, right? If they're going to be buying underneath this bull bar, the stop realistically is going to go either underneath those little minor swings, which those aren't exactly the strongest swings in the world to back you up. Or you've got the much wider swing a lot farther down, and that one could be, well, I mean, it's pretty far away. Being that it is that far away, they're going to have to deal with the situation of, well, a, a pretty heavy stop. And that means that their targets, if they're putting their stops way down here, uh, that puts the target still above the current candle's high. So, you know, I mean, we can see that even though it is considered a quote-unquote what we're calling a scalp, that's not really much of a scalp. That's a pretty big distance. I mean, we're talking on the S&P here. Uh, if they're going to be utilizing that as their stop distance of 117 ticks. So this is much more likely going to be an area where bulls are going to be looking for a quick response. They don't want to see it spend a lot of time down there and then try to get the shift back to the upside and get the trend going higher. Now, if the market is going to start falling lower, chances are we'll still see bullishness trying to support off of the 4720s. But if they're not able to get things going off of that, then that will probably become resistance and create a turning point back to the downside. We'll have to wait and see, but this first candle doesn't really give me the warm fuzzies. It would make a lot more sense for the bulls to buy underneath it, looking for a continuation. Of course, the buyers do pick it up underneath that low and rocket it back higher, closing out a, a big... <laughs> I mean, that's about as as bullish of a bear bar as you can ask for. It's only a couple ticks away from being an incredibly strong bull bar. And we do have the bulls which are trapping underneath the base looking for the rotation higher. Now the nice thing about this little rotation is that, well, that that allows them a, not necessarily a safer entry point because we're still talking some pretty heavy stop distances here, but 75 ticks is not as bad as buying way the heck up here. If you were to buy above the bull bars high, now you're pushing into almost 170 ticks comparatively buying under here. Now you're sitting at 117. It makes a pretty big difference in the bottom line in the long term. Now, if the bulls can get more continuation back up, this is basically a bullish candle, or it might as well be. The buyers will be looking to go back above this for, for I mean, really for further momentum back up. But we also want to see what this first five-minute volume is looking like. If we get that first five-minute volume node, that'll usually give us an idea as to how things are going. And the volume node is at the top. So if the bulls are going to go above the high, well, we can see some issues, right? I don't want to be a buyer way up here either. It looks... Like it's a perfect spot to get things going until we realize that all of the volume on that first five volume balance is in our way. Uh, that makes that a lot less appealing and a lot more interesting if we can get an inside dip. Possibly or potentially even a retest of the same spot from before around the 2175 area for a rinse and repeat. We've got a nice little dip back down. The buyers do actually go a little bit further 
uh, somewhat of a kind of a little micro channel going on there. Uh, but either way, a micro trend line working its way lower finds support and bounces it back up. We know that buyers just don't want to buy way too high up because there's just too much stuff in the way. They don't want that in the way, so the better spot would be to buy on the cheap. That does mean that they've kind of opened the door on themselves a little bit in terms of risk, so it's got to go sooner than later. It can't be hanging out here forever with all of these bear bars going lower and nothing going to the upside. We know there's some resistance, okay, but at least test it, challenge it, show us that they've got something. Now, we've got to wait to see if we can get anything better looking than this right now, but so far the bulls seem like they're still picking up underneath bar one. <clears throat> We've got a nice little inside bull bar trying to get things going once again. And after this inside bull bar, this is what's really going to try to get bulls going. But, you know, here's the thing, right? We know that a lot of the support is coming in off of the base. Buyers, they may want to buy above this bull bar. There is some room. Like, if they bought here... They've at least got a scalp distance, right? I mean, they can, they've got some wiggle room inside of here. It's not so close like it was before. So it's not that bulls can't buy above this bull bar, but what would make a lot more sense here is to allow the bulls to trigger above the bull bars high, get those bulls in, and then see if we can get a little bit of an inside pullback. Buy at a better price. Buy back down towards this previous area, down towards the low closes. That's more the area that we want to see in terms of pricing. Now, it might not necessarily get all the way down there, but that's going to be a significantly more beneficial spot than just flat out buying above the bull bars high. Again, this would be an area, given the amount of support that's coming in, that buying above a bull bar is high, there's room. It would make sense. We could definitely see that being a scenario. And as far as a hard stop location goes, it'd be underneath the low to above the top doesn't fit the target into resistance on the five minute POC, but it does fit the target inside the high. It's better than nothing. Beautiful bullish continuation, but you will notice we did have some nice little wick pullback inside of there, allowing the bulls to pick it up on an inside snap and keep this thing going back to the upside. Not quite all the way back down there. That would have been really, really nice, but uh, you know, you can't get them all. Uh, as far as the bullish continuation goes, we've got a nice rally back up. We're closing directly on top of the five minute. And that does mean that, well, we're not necessarily out of the woods here. Let's drag this volume a little bit further forward and see what's going on. We've got the volume node, which is broken down at 47.21, suggesting that the majority of longs are built in from that point. So if we factor in where their targets are going to be, it would also make sense as to why we've got some resistance here. That's their two to one objective. It's a logical point where we see some pullback. If we are going to get some pullback, once again, another inside pullback, a deeper corrective phase, maybe back to the previous candles high, maybe back to the open close transition, somewhere inside of there is gonna be a nice spot to try to kick the market back up and keep it going. Same thing as before. Buyers don't wanna buy above this bull bar because now there's no room. Buying up here doesn't offer up much else other than a scalp and that's if you're lucky so buying a dip is going to make a lot of sense once again another really strong bull bar up but notice there's actually no candle gapping it's a negative gap they filled it in and it's all wick well what do we what do we know took place there <laughs> right that's all those buyers buying on the cheap looking for the continuation phase breakout above the highs so far, that hasn't happened yet, but we do have a good rotation working their way back up. Three strong bull bars standing pretty proud. Chances are we'll probably get some follow through. If they if they don't, uh, it might be because we run into the highs, right? If we're dealing with the highs up at 47.35, we were talking about here, their entry point. Guess what is above the top? That would be their three to one objective. So if the market does reach just above the high and fail, that could be a scenario where that three to one is filled and then it's kind of game over. All right, we are starting to see some resistance stepping up to the plate here. We've got a little bit of pressure coming off of that three to one area. But notice when the market pulled down to the two to one, it bounced off of it as though it were support. That's a good sign. It's not a great sign seeing it reject off the three to one and not come back very nicely, especially closing a heavy bear bar with no candle gapping to the upside. Uh, th there are a few red flags here, but the fact that they're closing above that two to one area suggests at least that the bulls are trying to hold on to it. 
if the bulls are going to get things going, I mean, again, like we've been seeing all morning, it would make sense to see a dip by area a little bit lower down. Um, I would love to see below this previous bull bars low or even below the next one, something a bit further down away from these highs. These highs are very, very nerve wracking. Oh, and a bull engulfing candle. Okay. Uh, so the, the bears do end up getting triggered in. It ends up being a trap. They did I mean, to be fair, they did pull back deep into that wick, but not as far as I would have liked them to. Uh, huge bull bar continuing its way back up. Very realistically, now that we've broken above and are closing above the 3 to 1, the 5 to 1 target is next. The 5 to 1 target is at 47.40 if they want to keep this going. So as long as that hasn't been filled, the bulls are going to be looking for some continuation. Huge bull bar, engulfing bull bar. Basically, any pullback is going to be fair game for a lot of scalpers. We have a continuation phase to the upside. The target has almost been filled. Candles are getting a little bit narrower, and that could offer up an opportunity for buyers to pick up underneath the candles low. We have to be mindful of this previous trap. Those bears did get suckered in, and the market may want to try to come back to allow them out. But chances are we will still find buyers underneath the bull bar if it does trigger them in to kick it back up to the highs and finish the job if it doesn't just immediately finish the job as is we get a poke underneath the previous candles low beautiful test with a nice bounce back up enough for scalpers for sure but along with this we haven't completed the objective above the highs for the major five to one although they have gotten all the way up to a three to one and a, a tick away from a five to one good enough i suppose in some cases uh but as it stands so far we have a really strong string of candles we don't have really anything suggesting that the bears are taking over there's really only the bulls suggesting that we should go further up maybe a deeper pullback the deeper corrective phase slightly sideways um sure but nothing of uh, nothing of crazy interest or anything that would stand out at the moment uh, as far as where it is now it just seems like it's buy low and hope that it cycles back up towards the top on the next candle we get a strong bear bar cycle back down the bulls have not filled their objective technically speaking at this at the at the five to one uh, they have gotten a two to one and three to one that's good enough in most cases starting to dip back with another bear bar stacking up an obvious point of interest that may start stacking would be down here in this little pocket of wicks or the wick pocket. Nice little zone of support around the 4730s for them to try to kick it back up. Uh, but if that doesn't really hold, there's not really anything until the POC down at 4721. And well, if that doesn't hold, it's kind of game over. A little bit of bearishness. We are seeing some support kicking off of that little shelf area, but now we've got another third candle. Same thing that happened over here. Three bear bars down, the first one. Might not have been that strong, but now we've got three in total back to back. That's not good. If longs are trying to get something going for the long side, that's not going to help them at all. And that makes it even worse. Now they're sliding down towards that 4721. Chances are that's going to be the POC reach back that they're looking for as it cycles into this 1030 time frame here. Now another consideration would be that the earlier shorts that we were talking about may have been possibly trapped that would have been at 2950. it's not looking like they're very trapped anymore uh, so given that they had to risk all the way up to the highs we can sort of figure out where they may be we've got a nice little profit target area which would stack up here as a one to one we've got their two to one which is down towards settlement and then three to one which would be through it that would be a pretty wild ride down to the lows there, but uh, we'll see what they have in store. The bears are beginning to stack up. We've got four consecutive bear bars down, some seriously strong bear momentum, uh, but we've got a POC standing in the way. Well, it was. Uh, now we're breaking through it with some heavy bear conviction. Sellers will be looking for continuation. And more importantly, we're also breaking through and closing underneath the one-to-one -one area. So long as it stays below this, we've got a chance to keep going down towards that major next two-to-one objective. And wow, all in one. Uh, it, it stayed underneath that and reached out and got the target all in one shot here. Beautiful resistance off the highs fantastic support off the lows and we know why that support exists there it's not because settlement it's because that's where their targets are right so if their targets are there but settlements here it's going to have a hard time reaching out to fill that settlement price 
Now, of course, that's not to say that it can't reach out and keep going. And with this many bear bars back to back to back, chances are any pop that we get up anywhere near these candle highs will likely get rejected back down anyway. Uh, so we're still game. We're still on course to keep going down to the downside and keep this thing going as long as we get a bounce. Or it doesn't bounce and does nothing. That would be an inside bear bar closing down towards its lows. Uh, with this much bearishness, chances are there's going to be bears underneath that low. Here's the thing. This is the same problem that we ran into up at the top. If they're going to be selling here, they're selling directly into the target area from before. It's not that we don't have a huge string of bear bars down, and it probably will break through this area. But chances are, this is a tough spot, right? They're selling directly into an area that's proven itself already. It stopped this thing dead in its tracks. So selling underneath that is going to be challenging. It's going to be a lot more beneficial to sell back where all of this wick is taking place. Nice little stacked pocket of wicks there to back off into. 47, 15s, 16s. That looks a lot nicer. This is exactly why the market cycles down, hits the target area, bounces right back up. Now it's a double bottom. So this is where you don't want to be left holding the bag. And a lot of shorts, even though this is a base, uh, could possibly get kind of concerned here. There may be enough people exiting above this bear bar that longs could look for a quick little scalp in the opposite direction. It's kind of funky looking. Um, again, with this many bear bars to the downside, chances are we get another leg lower. But it's obvious what's going on. We've got a lot of support that is in the way. There's some of those people running and kind of running for the hills. Uh, they're nervous, right? We're hitting a major zone of support. A lot of shorts who are selling off the highs are taking profit, and it's creating a bit of a brick wall. Now we've got to bounce back up. If this starts triggering back up with much substance, they could run into some issues. We know where the resistance is. It's right here at their previous target area. And right off of it, basically to the tick, rejecting right back down again. Uh, now, <laughs> talk about awkward. This is the exact same entry point. If the sellers are going to enter here, it's the same spot. That's that's incredibly awkward. Now, a lot of shorts obviously filled up here, but that makes it really weird because all of the sellers who were in riding to the downside have now been pressured negative, and now they're basically being told, hey, if you want to enter again, you can, but it's the same price. You just sat through all of that other garbage, and it's the exact same price that's going to cause a little bit of disappointment. So if it's going to go, it's got to go soon, like now, right? They're not going to want to see this thing hang out. We're waiting for the second leg, see if they can finish the gap and maybe reach out and grab that final target. <laughs> all in one shot, huh? Uh, big blow off all the way down to settlement, one tick away from, one tick? Two ticks, sorry. Uh, two ticks away from that major objective. And that slide down really starts taking the cake. We're going into that 11 o'clock hour now. We've got settlement. We've got major objectives being filled almost. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Nice little inside bear bar. But same problem. Huge objective that is just below. If the market's going to go lower, there's not going to be a lot built into it because of that big target. And sure enough, it hits it like a brick wall and starts rotating back up. Now, if the market's going to rotate back up from here, this is where things get a little bit interesting because they're, I mean, this is a big target. You're not just talking like a small little half scalp, you know, anything like that. We're talking some big objectives. Not only that, but also settlement. There's a lot of traders doing the same thing for different reasons in the same place. And that usually creates a bit of a bounce. Another inside bull bar, not really a bounce per se, uh, but a pretty strong bull bar. That does also, as we can see, complete the objective on the downside. And uh, let's see what we can get. Nice little bull bar continuation and a bit more follow through. Now we've got some candle gapping going between these two. Likely this keeps going further up and up and up. All right. So that's kind of where we're at as far as the uh, the overall candle by candle psychology goes for the day as it's going into the 11 or 12 o'clock time slot here. Uh, let me go forward a little bit to where it is now. It doesn't look like it's gone anywhere. And there we can see all of those different zones as far as they how they lined up from how we were talking about them with VIPs in the room. So there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of these areas of interest. But 
really, a lot of it comes down to the psychological aspect. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot of, oh, the stochastic this or the MACD that. It's, it's more the longs are trying to do this, the shorts are trying to do that, and how are they feeling? What are they doing with that information? And that's where we can really derive a massive amount of useful uh, trading information. It's very viable, uh, tradable stuff. So definitely something that we need to keep in our tool belt. Speaking of, hopefully you found this video useful and something that you can add to your tool belt. I know it's been a little while since we've done these. These are very long recordings, that's why. Uh, <laughs> they take a while, but uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to drop those in the comments below or swing in uh, on over to the YouTube side of things. We go live every trading day at 1300 Eastern, uh, or at least most trading days. And if you have any questions, you can ask them inside there. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you had an awesome trading day and we will see you in the next video. Thanks.